Yeah, g'day and welcome back to the channel. Normally I like to muck around with my mill and my lathe and things like that, but at the moment I'm on a bit of a different trip. I need to do an investment casting. What is investment? Well, Nico, I'm glad you asked. So you first make your part out of something with a low melting point. Beeswax, for example, if you're making turbine blades back in antiquity, you coat it in a shell of some sort of plaster-like material that can sustain high temperatures, or you pour a whole block of the stuff around it. Once the plaster, otherwise known as the investment, has hardened, you can then heat the whole thing up into a, in a fire, melt out the wax, burn out the remains of the wax, and you're left with a cavity in your block or shell of plaster, which you can then pour your metal into, and you'll get your turbine blade. But I'm not casting a turbine blade, I need to cast a beetle. George Harrison, to be precise. Why do you need to cast a beetle? Well, if you're married to a Beatles fan... Nope. I'm trying to make statues of all the Beatles crossing Abbey Road. This ain't my first rodeo. It all started with this Paul McCartney model on the Thingiverse. But things got serious once I found that you could buy a 3D model of the guys crossing Abbey Road. So far I've done this semi-successful John Lennon and a totally unsuccessful George. Today's casting is going to be a second attempt at George. Seven hours later. Well, let's see how this printed. This is going to be a cap for my new flask. Made a pad, added a pocket, added a pouring basin for the metal to go into, added a, an in gate or a sprue, another one on the other side to support the other leg, put a couple on the corners just to make sure the whole thing's stable, and then added some fillets to the whole thing. Cool. Now I need to print that out. Approximately 10 hours later. So there's the flask lid. The end gate's gonna be lined up with the rear leg. So the metal should pour in down the one leg and then back up through the other leg. I need to add a sprue to each of the hands. And the whole thing forms the lid of the flask, which just needs to be sealed and taped. And then a the plaster goes in the top. My friend has lent me this vacuum pump. I plan to use it to de-aerate the plaster. You can see which way it needs to turn. You plug that in and see if I've got it right. Uh. That's back to front. Have you guys seen one of these plugs before? That's very crafty. To reverse the rotation of the motor, rather than rewiring the plug, you just have to get in here and rotate it. Push and turn, out it comes. And now the polarity should be correct. So this is my vacuum chamber. This is the lid for it, it's got a seal on it. I need to make an adapter now to connect the vacuum pump to this fitting. Well, let's just do a quick dry run and make sure this pump's going to work. Okay, that's great. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really working. It's... Oh, yeah. That's definitely pulling a decent vacuum on the chamber. I don't have a pressure gauge, but 
it's sucking that lid down super tight. And you can see it bounce back up when I release it. Cool. Paint a bit of glycol on them. Helps to make sure that there are no air bubbles attached to the mold. So next up with my tiny glue gun, I'll just start putting down a bead of hot glue, which is gonna help seal the whole flask closed. And I hopefully complete the seal. Next up, a layer of tape. So how much plaster do I need? Got a 6.25 centimeter radius, square that, times pi, and then times the height, which is 24 centimeters. Gives me about three liters. Well, with she who must be obeyed out at her favorite clothing shop, there's a pretty decent chance that I can get all of this uh, crime committed and all of the evidence cleaned up and returned to its proper position before I get busted. One shift later. Well, I was hoping to burn this out and cast it today, but it's raining, so I can't really do a casting. I have to have my furnace outside. Now, if you watched my oven building video, you'd know that the insulation is calcium silicate board, and this stuff's pretty soft. To protect it, especially on the door where it touches the seal, and on the bottom where things might get dragged in and out, I'd like some sort of a protective hot face, hard face of a harder material. I tried furnace cement, but it doesn't really work. The calcium silicate just sucks the moisture out before it binds, so it never really goes hard. It just stays like a sort of soft powder and falls apart. Now, a lot of viewers made comments that what I really need is a sodium silicate water glass based uh, sealant or hard face. So this is what I've bought. It's the same stuff that was used here, this adhesive, which glues these cords on. Now this stuff is also sodium silicate based. It is designed for mounting insulation plates. It's also designed to stick to fibrous materials, but it takes two days to dry. So I think before I install it, I'm gonna use the oven for the first time as a burnout oven. The next day. Well, I started the initial dry out overnight. And then this morning, I ramped up from 150 to 300 and 70 degrees, held that for two hours. Now I'm ramping again up to 750 for the burnout. Yeah, at the moment it's raining. Forecast is for the rain to stop this afternoon, so I sure as hell hope so. And look, the first of my jalapeno chilies is starting to grow. Yeah, right, coming up now to 750. And when you cook it for another four hours. Two hours later. Well, we're coming up on halfway through the burnout phase. You can see that it's looking pretty good. Unfortunately, it's still raining outside. Yeah, I'd be hoping to start getting my foundry set up, but until it stops raining, just have to wait and edit. The weather radar does show this clearing in time, so let's hope it's correct. One hour later.
Well, now it's glowing inside. We can switch over to oil. It's always a bit of a challenge to get it to start, but let's try it. Hey, check this out. There's definitely metal that's come up that riser, so that's a very good sign. Let's see what we got, huh? Well, at first look, there's something wrong with his hip, but otherwise, at least it's a figure. Guess we'll take it in, cut off those sprues, and clean it up a little. Oh man, this is blunt as. Better buy another like hacksaw blade, I think. I was watching the Veg Oil guy's excellent video on casting the Warhammer figure and he recommended for the cleanup just water, a squirt of dishwashing liquid and some citric acid. One nap later. Let's critique this, shall we? Well, the detail that is in here is pretty good. The next thing I'm pretty happy about is that the mold pretty much filled all the way. Yeah, that kind of means I've got the metal temperature.
pretty close to being correct. Could have been maybe a little bit hotter, maybe that might have helped, but otherwise it's not too bad, especially compared with last time. Now what about the bad things? Well, yeah, he kind of looks like Will's dad in Pirates of the Caribbean. I think the barnacles have got to him. This here is due to the 3D print not being sealed between the striations. So you get the investment plaster creeping inside the model. Quite a bit of that all down the back there. And also in that area of the hip. Now this is the main one, is that that 3D print didn't seal. I once did one of these castings where I spray painted the 3D print with just see-through spray paint to seal it. I sort of got the impression that that caused like a shell because it didn't burn out cleanly. But I think I need to try this again because even a slight defect from a non-burnt out shell is probably better than the defects I'm getting. The next thing that really sucks is that poor old George isn't going to be able to play guitar if he's only got one finger on his fretting hand. When you 3D print you need support structure and what I'm finding is I break the hands off when I'm trying to remove the support structure. I've tried various different settings on the slicer and I really haven't come up with something that'll help me there. I'm using Kura. So if someone has a good setting to release those hands easily, I'm all ears. The third defect is, I've ground them off now, but there were quite a lot of air bubbles sticking to the legs. The solution for that is vacuuming the uh, investment. which I did. That pump will pull down to about 150 millibars. However, with all the fittings and stuff I'm using, I'm not 100% sure if I'm getting that close to that. So maybe I can improve a little bit there with a pull a stronger vacuum. The other thing is I'm not sure how long to pull the vacuum for, so maybe I didn't leave the vacuum working for long enough. And the last defect is that the corners here have rounded over. And I think that's probably connected with me putting runners out to those corners. This corner also has issues and it didn't have a runner. Well I'm thinking maybe hotter material or the other option is better gating. I'm going to put a link to the Home Foundry Forum which is where I'm putting up an article on this. So if you have any inputs please come and join us on that forum and give me some suggestions. Alright. I'm super happy that this arrived. About a year ago, maybe a little less, I found I was making too many focusing mistakes because I couldn't really see focus errors on the little screen. To fix that, I bought a small HD Focus 7 extra monitor to go on top of the camera. Unfortunately, after a few months of using it, it started playing up and then it died completely. Small HD had me send it to one of their service centers. I chose the one in Zagreb. I think Avtech, all they could identify was that the power supply board had failed. They had me send it back to the mothership back in America. Unfortunately, it turned out that the Focus 7 was an end of life product and they didn't have any more power supply boards so they couldn't fix it. So yeah, they replaced it. They had great customer support. I really appreciate the, the support from Jeff there at Small HD. And they've now replaced it with the newer model called the Indy 7. It took a while. Uh, they had to wait until they were produced, which is normal. And it's taken the best part of a month to get here. But that's not uh, Small HD's issue. That's just, you know, with air transport today. With the lack of freighter capacity in the body of normal airliners, all freight has to go on dedicated freighter airline, uh, aircraft, and there's really not that many of them. But man, look at this, huh? Is this beautiful or what? It's pretty similar to the one I had before, same size, but the big difference now is this one's got a power input. I don't think the other one had that. And this one's also got SDI outputs, which I probably won't use, at least not until I get uh, some other kind of camera. But hey, oh, and I think this one's an aluminium body, whereas the other one, the focus was, I think, a plastic body. I'm just using a little small rig monitor holder.
And now let's mount it. I hope my coming videos are more free of focus area than the last couple of months have been. Oh wow, look at that. Ah, nice big picture with focus peaking. So a big shout out to Jeff at Small HD's customer support. Thanks very much. Back in business here, really appreciate the excellent customer service. So there we have it. Thanks a lot for watching and, and we'll be returning to my regular programming, which is lathes, once I've done Ringo.